Welcome to Monday Practice Hands for Healing online training with Yolanda. Thank you, everyone. Yolanda, all yours. And thank you, Maite, again for being there always. And the Wonder Group as well. And um, I was talking about the uh, what uh, Hands for Healing is much more than a training to do in a, uh, in a, with our patients in our clinic, or as you would say, with your clients. Hands for Healings at the very, very root is, uh, is something that changes lives because it gives you a standpoint, a different, complete stand, uh, point, a different point of view of the world. And um, I was wanted to, to share with you some of the images that I um, chose, have chosen for the Model 1 in Madrid, uh, which is starting a new, um, for a new formation in two weeks time. And um, The challenge is how to obtain the same goal online that I did when <laughs> during the ten year, the previous ten years when I did this uh, training in alive, okay. And um, here it is. And this is why it, uh, I put this emphasis, emphasis on the main principles, the concepts behind the training. Because this is what changes life then the training gives you tools to, but what changes life is a new way to see the world. And this is the thing I want to share with you. Okay. Okay, can you see the screen now? Not yet. N and now? No? No. Okay, okay, let me see what is going on. Okay. And this is an image that I think is behind hands for healing and synergetic is another perception of the world and the universe. And this is why I all am enjoying so much what is happening now in uh, with the James Webb uh, uh, images that I told you about. This one here was the first image that was shown at the in the um, the beginning okay and um because this has a specific consequences <laughs> look at this here it is the telescope okay so it, it it's depends on the glasses you are wearing, how you see the world. 
And if you see the world like this donkey with the screens like that, if this is your starting point where you see the world, this is how you're going to look your patients because this is the way you look at yourself. And this has specific consequences. This way of looking the, the world has specific consequences then in basic concepts such as life and death. And uh, life as being like a coin. We we live, uh, we don't, cons we, we live as we never going to die behind death, back with the, uh, death doesn't exist. So uh, when we change the perception of a world, Life is a coin of two faces, life and what we call death. But the coin, the coin is life. Life with capital letter, with this view, okay? And as a flow of, well, of a river, and of course, from this point of view, death doesn't exist at all. And then I had this, probably you have seen it. If not, I'll show you. It refers to the monarchas. Have you seen them? Have you heard about them? This is where the worm is nourishing itself. And then how the metamorphosis occur. This is life. This is exactly what life is. We are, we only change in, in, in the in the form we change states and lives go on and go on and go on because then the butterfly goes and flies four thousand uh, kilometers to to Mexico and then put the eggs and then start all over again. This is the continuity of life. And again, this um, a different approach of seeing life with different uh, glasses has a definite, a, a an impact in what is to cure and what is to heal. It's two completely different things. Because then you know that heal, health is, health is integrity, is connectivity. And uh, illness is just a lesson is a way, an opportunity, a way to learn. And what we call the, uh, the illness is, um, an illness is um, where it shows what is happening to us. It's not the cause the the uh, is not the um, the the um, how's that? 
because now <laughs> doing this translation cause. again. Yeah, cause. It's, it's not the cause, it's not the cause. It's just the way it shows. And it changes completely. It's quite a different approach. So what is healing? If we know that everything is connection, everything is connected. Remember that we talk about it in the in the first uh, at the beginning of the module five. Everything is connected. Everything is conscious, and if everything is connected, then what is happening? Life is connection, and health is connection and healing. What is healing is reconnect what has been disconnected. And we, what is, what is it that has been disconnected? Ourselves with what we really are. So healing is made. <coughs> is to establish this connection, is reconnect us with what we really are, is reconnect us with our soul. And this is welcome to the adventure of consciousness. Okay. This is it. I stop sharing the. Dejar de compartir. Right. Okay. So, hi, Trish. <laughs> so, this is really for me the most important. Um, the essence, the principles are in the base of everything. And if you change that, if that is within you, then the training is the tools of how to navigate through the universe, through the universe in us, because we forgot that. In this disconnecting way we live, we are so much disconnected from ourselves, from everything, and of course, from the world. And if this is so, what about we aim at not only learning the techniques, which of course are very, very useful. Yes, indeed, indeed, do that. But in your alignment, the real, when you <clears throat> think about this deeply within yourself, within ourselves, is how, what is life? And from then on, from then on, the rest. And Trish, I was asking you, I don't know whether you were online then, um, if there were your <clears throat> um, uh, comments about the training and if there were any suggestions that you would like us to include so that we can improve the training for the future uh, groups. And um, what, what, uh, well, what is your opinion in, in this? I think it's pretty amazing the way it is. I can't think of anything right now of how to improve. I think, um, I feel so grateful and I think we're so lucky that we, are blessed with you teachers that you give so much you give your time you give your knowledge um and you know these extra days on Mondays for our practice is just um 
is just an amazing gift on top of the the course. Um, the course is so full of so much information and it's so well structured from module one and it just builds and builds and builds and when you look back and go because module one you're like oh it's a lot of stuff and then you look back and you go hey I know that now because it's structured in that way and um and you can ask any question and you guys answer it um so yeah I don't have anything at the moment of how how to improve it except that for me to learn Spanish <laughs> that would improve because then I could um go on the um go on the website and look at more stuff but um yeah no it's amazing so yeah thank okay. you <laughs> thank you Trish um <clears throat> I must tell you something which is very very specific of this training and this is thanks to Maite, because these Monday sessions, we don't have them in any other training for Hands for Healing. In weekly basis, no. This is just the doing of Maite, of Majorga, Australia. So Maite, don't you're amazing. This- don't think this is the usual. <laughs> it's not. It is not. And uh, it is actually a real challenge because it put us in a way, okay, and what happened with the other groups? And of course, we do have practices with, uh, practice with them, but on a weekly basis, no? Not on a weekly basis. Many thanks. And of course, we have. Yes. It was my proposal, my idea, because we know practice is the key. But also, you, Baltasar, and all the uh, availability. I love the way that every time you do a healing session or a practice, all of you always say, thank you for the opportunity to serve. And the concept of serving is so beautiful so yeah. this is also part of of the whole thing serving and doing this practice and building the community and yes i have another thing to improve the the hands for healing online training in australia and i have it in mind we're gonna have it the retreat Yes. Yes, indeed. And I was going to add that in because in a, in a, in the history of the hands for healing, we have all the ways to. Uh, well, first of all, it has been in in um, uh, alive. That's and uh, although this is a challenge, it is a completely different approach. And uh, when we have the people in in front of us and uh, as a flesh, <laughs> blood and flesh, and uh, well, this is something else. I'm not going to say which is really better or no. I, you know what, I would bet for a mixed. I would bet for some things like that and then this uh, opportunity being uh, retreats uh, being um, uh, and we do this in hands for healing this we do but it's just once and but then it's a weekend it's, it's, uh, it's in a place uh, Friday Saturday and Sunday okay and um, uh, we have had much more history of this in 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 Spain, but especially in in America, in Colombia, and there there are more teachers, more places, more is there in more students. Okay, and is 
a long history of work that is being going on. So the major challenge is Australia. Okay, so it was a way to, uh, okay, how can we do this from scratch, <laughs> from the very, very, very beginning? And uh, this was this was what aimed me to, as might I say, serve in helping to promote hands for healing, even in Australia. <laughs> And if that happens, then in other places with uh, with um, English speakers as well, because this is something is an additional feature. You see. Well, what else? I just like to make this emphasis in. Training is good, is necessary, and the techniques are amazing. Practice them in yourself, first of all, so, do, so that you know because you feel that this is true. You cannot do anything to no one if you are really not convinced because you have lived that this is a fact, that it really energy moves when you do certain movements, that energy connects and reconnects according to a specific, and this is what training is all about, a specific rules. This law of three, remember, I always make this overemphasize in the law of three. And when you keep that into your mind, it's even easier to do the practice because then you really know that what and your hands goes direct and you can feel the difference, and this is what the training is all about, to practice the sensations that you can really feel the differences. As I told you, first in yourself. I have um, been in bed um, during the weekend with a, with a cold, and then I do this and I feel it. And I feel there is something that is has been blocked. It's not, the energy is not flowing. So what should I do? I put my hands because I know what lungs are, because I know what the I know the way it flows through the meridians. Remember, we talk about one and two of long meridian, and we also know the triangle of the um, system. Thymus, spleen, and liver. I know that lungs are the uh, secondary center of the fourth center, which are mammals. I can use them to unblock and to favor the flow of the energy of this congestion in my lungs through the magnetization of the secondary chakras of the lungs. I 
I also know that is, this is related to fifth center. And I know that fifth center is a dipole with the second. So I help to unblock to helping with the second. So we know things, we really know techniques. But what is most important of all is that we know the key word of connection, of everything is connected. I won't treat my lungs as a kilogram of meat. They are part of me. And me is part of <laughs> something bigger. So at the very first moment, I felt the impact of the cold. And of course, everything happens. Everything happens. I felt the impact. And headache, everything. The first thing was, okay, alignment. So let it flow. And the universal therapeutic technique from the beginning of the human being. Rest, fist, not meat, and water, hydrate. This is it. That's it mean that if I have a very high temperature and become an inf infection, I won't go and get an antibiotic? No, of course, I go and get the antibiotic. But fortunately, I am not in that stage. I didn't go straight there, no, let's see what happens and after this um 24 hour complete in bed and water and breathing then i began to get better and this is it and this with everything and if the thing is real heavy, I go without any problem to the antibiotic. No problem whatsoever with the conventional medicine. It's there for something and we go there and we use it. But we never um, um we, uh, as there is something that you always say, I'm not an illness. I am, I am me that has a cold. I'm not a cold. I can, I, 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 I cannot um, for. Uh, I don't forget. I don't forgive. No, I, no, I don't. Uh, I, I my Spanish and English now. I've been so much involved in this module one in Spanish that I have my broca area completely mixed up now. But the thing is, I don't lose what I am. I am what I am. I'm not a cold. I have a cold. But I am not a cold. And this makes the whole difference. Because 
I am not a cold. I treat, I have a cold which I treat with whatever is required. But I'm not a cold. Okay? And this is the in the main principles we talk about everything is conscious and everything is interconnected. This is so, but this is so not as a knowledge. This is so as a as a deep certainty. It's not even a belief. It's much more than a belief. It's a certain. It's the certainty that you have that we are much more and that we are connected. And I'm so much, uh, <laughs> I'm reading now a lot about the entanglement states because this is a revolution. This is going to change, well, about everything. I, I, I'm going to share again the screen to show you the image I have for the entanglement states in, the, in, in my presentation. No, let me see, hold on, hold on a second. Okay. Okay, here it is. Can you see it? This comes from what I show you, the entanglement and the Nobel Prize of Physics this year. And this is quite a revolution. This has um, making the, um, the quantic uh, computing. It, remember the, Wisdom, eternal wisdom says, as is up and above, in and out. Well, now there is the actual proof that this is so with this, <clears throat> with this technology. It's not even a theory anymore. It's a technology. And we have always, or I have always heard about what was called the butterfly effect, that if a butterfly in Australia uh, moves its wings, then a tornado can happen in San Francisco. So what is happening now with this technology, well, we can see that absolutely everything is interconnected. Everything absolutely, and more important of all, <clears throat> let me, okay, I stop sharing. So the, um, they have also proved that 
the law of certainty is not anymore. There is nothing you can control. Now it is proven. We, we know, but we live with the illusion that we want, that we can control anything. And then all these experiments, those new experiments <clears throat> that comes from this uh, ent entanglement state and um, technology shows that this particle you measure here, there is no way you can predict how it's going to uh, be thousands of kilometers away, no way. So this is quite something. I really invite you to <clears throat> Google, instead of Googling the doctor in medicine, Google, not anymore. Google what is happening in the world of physics. What is happening in the astronomy? What is happening? It, this is, it's, it's a revol a major revolution that is going on in the in the field of <clears throat> science and and uh, this is quite something so it is really good if we one of the things that amazes me is that all these discoveries prove are the living and technology proof of the perennial wisdom <laughs> that the people thought that it was something just spiritual or just uh, just a um, few people there with a uh, orange uh, sheet on and with mantra and so no it's much more than that it's very much more than that Well, any comments? <laughs> Petrina. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's very exciting that, uh, that the science is finally catching up to what we're what we already know. They're a long way behind. Um, but I think we know in our hearts that we don't we don't need it. Well, I don't feel we need it proven, but to get it out there in the world, and for more people to uh, to recognize what we already know, it's a good thing. Yeah, it will help. <laughs> Thank you, Petrina. This began uh, well began much much. Uh, before but one of the things that happened with this happens with the uh, acupuncture when the western world started to study what is happening with a needle in a specific point and that the chinese has been saying for seven thousand years that if you puncture this, then this happened in your lung. They've been saying this for 7,000 years. So they started to study this and it, it was amazing. It was really amazing. All the discoveries and the measurements, the piezoelectric effect, and they measured that in amperes and they, actually measure the effect of the activation. And so they, the thing is now, okay, so if I puncture here, something happens there. So could it be that they are connected? Is there a connection? Is there a channel? 
is there a flow of something that if I do this here, I can interact here. I think this is quite very interesting that keeps happening, keeps happening, it keeps happening. But the revolution, I'm really <laughs> happy with the entanglement states and the quantic, the quantic computer, the new computers, they, they are just technology, real technology. Just let's hope it's not used for war, but for the war, but for the for the life. And I think the planet is in this movement of changing eras to this ego, ego and materialistic way to a more <clears throat> cooper cooperative way of relationship. So this is something that it must happen. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> I would like to ask if you could please, Yolanda, share with us, how do you do your daily alignment? You were saying that sometimes you have time to do the alignment in the morning. And well, could you share with us a little bit what you do or how you do it, please? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. <clears throat> this has been evolving as everything. At the very beginning, years ago, while I was practicing it, I, it took me hours. I could be one hour, one and a half, two hours. There was some time when, um, you know, we feel this influx at around four o'clock in between uh, three and five, which is the impact of the long energy and uh, the people, and you can, uh, uh, you you have a leave it yourself. I think that, I don't know what happened, but at four o'clock in the morning, I'm, I, I'm awake. Okay. And, and this happens because of something, because the major impact of the energy of the lung, which is the energy of the air, which is the first thing we do when we are in this plan, breathe to breathe and uh, this happens around that uh, that time so what i did it was go to my specific place of um of oh I, you know what i'm going to give you a tour to my to my place of to my place of meditation. Oh, beautiful! So privileged. We were. This is the the gift of technology. <laughs> I'm in your place. Thank you very much. This is a very small area that I had here, that it was a waste. So I put these windows three years ago, three and a half years ago, I put this window, so I close it. So I um, just room enough for one, uh, sit so i sit here and this is my this is gobi the desert of gobi mm -hmm. 
It's beautiful. This is so I call it my cave. It's a beautiful it cave. cave. Full and of special I... things. <laughs> so I go to my cave every single day. But on those days, I used to spend um, two hours from four and a half to six and a half, more or less. So um, the very least, the very, very least, then I did some Dao in Qigong. So because this instrument, which we call body, also needs to be looked after, also needs caring. This is very important, okay? So <clears throat> with the, um, the uh, COVID, I again did um, uh, online exercises uh, half an hour and then a shower and then a breakfast. And this for, for uh, time. But then I realized that uh, it's not just a moment or one hour or two hours. It's how you try to maintain all the time, one second, just one second, but every everything you do, everything you do. If I'm doing my breakfast, I am doing my breakfast, hundred percent my breakfast. There's nothing more important in the world than my breakfast. And there is a meditation. If I eating my breakfast, I'm eating my breakfast. I'm not doing it. I'm eating and having it and enjoying it. And it, when I finish, and if I'm with my patients, this is the best moment of all in my life. This is 100%. And uh, the other day, one of them said, don't you get tired? Exactly on the contrary. Quite on the contrary. This is something that is a way to meditate all the time. So, Mighty, to answer you, of course, we have to practice because we are not used to do it. We have too many. Um, things that we do it without thinking. We are in an autom automatic. We are like a pilot, automatic pilot. All the time, all the time. No, hold on a moment. Be conscious of the time. And alignment means one line. And one line is straight, not like that but like that, and alignment is present. And meditation is being in present. Whatever you do, whatever you, whatever you do, whatever, everything in present. It's not easy because the, the, the habits, the, the uh, everything that we've been doing in a, the pi automatic pilot is on all the time as well. It's on all the time. So the real, for me, the real, the real exercise is trying to be aware when the automatic pilot is guiding me. And then, eh, moment. And back again to be aware. I'm going to demonize my pi automatic pilot. No, because this pilot has been learning for 72 years. 
no, I'm not going to say you demo, you demo. No, sometimes it's useful. Sometimes it's useful, but I'll do it consciously with conscious. I, 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 but if I have to confess every day less and less, let the automatic pilot guide me. And I realize when, most important of all, I realize when I'm in that mode. And I don't, this is something very important, I don't blame myself, I don't punish myself for being in that mode. I accept it as part of my 72 years training in this, <laughs> in this um, world. But always with the awareness that what I'm learning is I'm not being in that mode, that that mode has helped me it, it was useful, has been useful, and sometimes maybe it's useful, okay? It is like driving a car. When you're learning to how to drive, then you start, okay, the wheel, the brake, and you are like that. There is a moment in which is mode driving, driving mode. Perfect. Driving mode is perfect. You are not thinking whether where to put your hands or how to push uh, the brake. You are in automatic mode, driving automatic mode. But what happens if I'm driving automatic mode and then I start thinking in something else? I have an accident. <laughs> <laughs> I can't crash. So I use the automatic mode to be aware what I'm doing. What I'm doing, I'm driving. Driving to what I'm going, I'm going, I'm here. It's not only I'm going there. No, I'm driving here. So I'm aware what is happening here. So if some kid runs in front of me, or if I see a ball in front of me, we have a saying, if you, when you're driving, you see a ball, stop because a child is running behind it. So I'm aware. I, I use the automatic mode, it's useful, but I'm aware. And being aware is something I really practice every single day, but not as a job, as a joy. I enjoy practicing it. And I laugh at myself when I do something in the, in the, in the automatic, in the previous mode, in the automatic mode uh, that, uh, that is no, it's not, it's, I, that is not really healthy one, healthy. I know it's not healthy doing that, but I do it nevertheless. And I don't blame myself. I don't punish me. I laugh at me and then I pay for it. If I eat something that I know is not, it's not healthy, but I was used to have it for, 70 years, <laughs> like whatever, like a sweet or whatever. I have it. I, I, uh, <laughs> I said, yo te bendigo lechuga. I um, bless you. Okay. I bless you. If it is um, a coconut ice cream, which I like, I said, I bless you. 
Letos. <laughs> and of course, then what happened the following day? I have mucus. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is it. I'm not having ice cream every day. It's just in summer, one, two, in summer. I'm not buying it. I mean, it's something that is not anymore governing me. The problem with the automatic mode, it's that it governs you. You are not free because you are doing what you were supposed to do or what you were used to do. And uh, well, this is it. Yeah, very beautiful. I really like that part of laughing at yourself because it is very important to be able to laugh, not punishment or not guilty. And yeah, that is true. Well, everything is true, but that part is, is a challenge as well. But very beautiful when you can start laughing at yourself. Oh, of course. Not taking yourself yeah. too seriously, no? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and all this comes from changing the glasses. You change your glasses. And this has consequences. And uh, changing the glasses allows you to see the world to marvel, marvel. You get um, you um, you get amazed with the wonder of the world. This is the feeling. This is the feeling. You know, I when I see a child, two years old, they. They are, they are a wonder. They are discovering the world. Wanting to grasp everything, try everything. Of course, they have to touch everything, taste everything. They have to do it, of course. I think there is something I tell the parents when they come to me is that um, this is a room and there is a two years old that he is discovering the world and then he discovers all surprise. There is a plug with two holes in the wall. What is a child of that age supposed to do? You tell me. Put the fingers inside. Introduce the finger inside. This is exactly what he should do because he's discovered in the world and he finds that there are two holes in a wall. So he needs to find out what is happening in these two holes. And the first thing is put the fingers. And then what happened? Electricity. <gasps> surprise and it since it hurt him <laughs> and then what he does like the animals uh, saliva is it's quite something and he learned a lesson he knows now that when he sees two holes in the wall he will never put the introduce the fingers there same uh, scene, but the mother is in the room. The finger, and the mother goes straight, hugs him. Oh, my darling, my beauty, poor scene, poor scene, poor scene. And this very moment, the kid learned a very important lesson. When I want my mother to hug me, 
<laughs> I can do certain things. So my mother runs to me. <laughs> okay. Third act is not the mother, but the father. <laughs> and then goes the father. How dare you? I told you not going around like that. And the kid is in a panic like that. <gasps> What is the lesson he has just learned? I have to do things back my father's when my father is not in <laughs> because my father is going to shout out to me. And this is how we began our lessons in this world. <laughs> And then the challenge is to unlearn. Unlearn that thing so we can really learn what life is about. And then again, to the starting point. And what's the starting point? James Webb. And <laughs> the starting point. The universe is me. But not a theory. Not a theory within me and then all these uh, things we learn in the automatic mode have conditioned have separate me of this actual actual sensation of being part of something bigger of being part of of having the potential the, the the potentiality of the universe within me and i've seen another thing very beautiful that you do when you are asking the patient things and sometimes the patient say i don't know and then there is kind of a, a tricky way you say what if you know and that what if opens something that the patient says something that is actually related and connected, no? Yeah, yeah. And that is something that that is also is a technique and is really, really useful when the people say, Oh, I'm scared. Oh, I'm scared. Okay, you're you're scared, okay. And where? Scared. But where, where, where in the screen, because the body is a screen, where in the screen is this feeling? Where do you feel it? I don't know, feel it, just feel it. And people always put their hands up in automatic, this is automatic mode. Or here, it doesn't matter where, but they put their hands where they feel the feeling. And, uh, and when they feel it, and then they uh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Where? No, you tell me where you are. Where do you feel that you are afraid? Where, where, where? You touch. I don't know. No second. Well, feel it. Feel your fear. Feel it, feel it. Where, where? And then automatic, they put it, whatever. And this is an example. They put the hands where they feel it. But and then I say, okay, good, feel it. And then they stop. I say, no, 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 again. No, no, again. Feel it again. Feel your fear. Feel in the screen of your body where the fear is. 
because the fear is not a flying thing. A fear is something that you feel, right? All emotions are things that we feel. They are not outside you. They are within you. The, in, the thing is to discover where in, in you is the feeling. It's located, it's a location, it's a, everywhere. Okay, everywhere. But there is one specific one. This is the moment in automatic mode, they, they take their hands and then, <clears throat> okay, now feel it. Concentrate in your fear. No, 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 back again. Concentrate in your fear. Mm -mm. Again. Now we are going to accompany. We are not going to reject it. We are going to feel it completely. And we are going to breathe it. And the, at the beginning, the person is like that. <clears throat> now let's breathe in and breathe out. And then you, you accompany it, the process of the breathing, and then you start seeing this. And when you see this, then you ask, how's your fear is better? Why? Because with you grasp the sensation, you grasp it. You are aware that the sensation is not something outside, it's within you. You discover within the place within you. You grasp it. You stay there until until it solves, <clears throat> solves, dissolves. And why it happens? Why is this possible? Because with the breathing, you are connecting with the present time, and in the present time is where you saw whatever emotion is troubling you because what is fear? Fear is anticipation of the future. But if you are, you manage to be, if you manage to be in the present time, then What, what anticipation? What future are we talking about? What future are we talking? We are here. This is something very interesting to practice. I've done this a lot with my patients and it's amazing. It's amazing because may, the emotions, the emotions are within in us. I very feel a hate. I am so angry with my husband. I hate him. I can't stand him. I can do to to. Okay, where is that? It's not there. That's your husband. Where? Because your husband hasn't learned what you're feeling about him. <laughs> you have a feeling of hatred, of anger with your husband. Where do you feel it? Everywhere, everywhere. No, everywhere, no. It's not everywhere. Concentrate <laughs> in your anger. And where is the concentration? And then you feel automatic. They don't, when you put it, they don't think about it. They say, check. They go, usually go close to the liver. <laughs> okay, stay there. Stay there. Live your anger. Live it. Now let's breathe in. 
And in the breathing, breathing is, breathing is the real remedy <laughs> for most of the things. I mean, from the emotional point of view, Claire, of course. You see? It's, I practice. You do it with yourself so you can do it with your patients. What I want to really, really emphasize is hands for healing gives you techniques, but much more than that gives you the opportunity to change glasses and to see the world. And of course, as a consequence, to see life, death, health, illness in a different way. This is, for me, what is the most important uh, um, lesson. lesson the training can teach. The other things are the techniques, the, how to do it, okay? How to, the approach, how to drive through these um, GPS addresses that life show you, shows us all the time. And, but what is important is from the starting point and what's the starting point and the starting point is a different view of the world, of the life, of health. And this is something that you, you either feel it or not. <laughs> I mean, you, you feel it. And once you feel it, then the techniques get another impact. And talking about techniques. Then the techniques. Hmm? Talking about techniques and um, after this morning practice with Baltasar that he has a special technique that he developed himself or some of the teachers as well. It is the feeling, no? A scanning. And sometimes he knows before the patient say something, he's oh it's in the feet, it's in the, it's that, it's something that somehow you develop a connection to feel or to know where is the blockage or the leak of energy or how is the, the web, no? The, how could you describe or suggest to develop this ability? This is just practice. And what is behind that? Everything is connected. This is what is behind that. He can get in there. Why? Because he is connected with the connection that is connected with the person. <laughs> Everything is connected. So he's been practicing this sensibility to use the hands as screens as as a, to do the screening not not as a screen to do the screening in this interconnected way so he's not discovering he's just feeling in him because he's connected And this is practice, 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 practice. But this comes from where? From a change of glasses. <laughs> that everything is connected. And if we put this in everything is consciousness, and then this is a bigger step. Because in everything is consciousness, you don't even need to use your hands. You just do it with the connection, with this open connection. What else did you do with the Balta this morning? I saw they did something, he did something with you that you were happy. 
Yeah, we uh, also did a healing session for me. <laughs> Many thanks to Pet Petrina, Kimberly, she, they were there, Baltasar. Yeah, because we were practicing the um, feeling of, of the pulse. And I wasn't able to feel too, too much my pulse. It was very low. So then he guided a, a healing session and also reminded us the points to enhance energy in the feet and in, in here and below the navel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe. You know, the pulse, this is like an anthem, okay? And this is the radio, is the bone. And what we, the pulse is in this artery, the radial. Man shows perfectly the radial, okay? And radial is not straight. It could be chi, 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 okay? And then I place my three fingers and three Y. Why I use the three fingers? Because the law of three. Every time I say three, <laughs> think about the law of three because we have three energies. And each of the fingers detects which each one of the energies. Kappa, Pita, Bata. Kappa being the closest to the wrist, Pita, the middle. And kapha, the uh, the ring finger. This is it. And when you train to feel the pulse, then you see that they are not the same. There are differences. At the beginning, you place the three fingers and feel it as a whole, okay? Then you just leave one finger and this is Vata. My Vata is very good because I'm teaching. <laughs> this is Pita. Good, good as well. And this is Kafa. I'm a bit low of Kafa. Today is Monday, is my fist. I do fist today, so <laughs> Kafa is a bit low. <laughs> okay, so these are the balls we use. But we don't do this in, in hands for healing. We do this in, uh, in, in synthetic. Well, Renato and Baltasar talked a little bit about the pulse. Yeah. As just as an introduction, but, uh, and yeah, today we also talk a little bit about it. Yeah, I know. I talked to about it with um, with um, Renato in, in Costa Rica when I asked him why did you t t talk about them about this and this is because this is not in the 
in the in the in the program. content of the it's not in the program. Well, it's useful. Okay, yes, of course, everything is useful. But what I think that the pulse, even for synthetic, is quite a thing. It's quite a thing. Yeah. So it's too much information, even for synthetic. Imagine in in hands. Well, many, many thanks. I don't know if there is another question, comment, something to ask. Something we did also with Baltasar was uh, practice the waving the web. Oh, very important. Absolutely very important. Uh, you did it through the 21st secondary chakras? Yes. Okay. Well, actually, it was that practice was with me <laughs> doing it to waving my web. <laughs> good. Very good. Very good. Indeed. Yeah, I, I feel much better after the morning practice. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, and you do, you can do it yourself. Yes. You can do it yourself. With the with the you charge the totality mudra in the Fine. in the magnetic <clears throat> with the magnetic energy in the fourth center and then you start doing doing it from the feet and so on and so on and so on. but feeling it feeling how you are weaving it how you are really weaving it. And um, it is useful as well, this breathing with the diapoles <coughs> and the, I did this with Rochelle in one of the sessions, um, the breathing, the diapoles and the colors as well. So you, in the seventh, you think in violet and go down to the red and you go up from the red to the seventh. Breathe in the violet to the red, breathe out the red too. And you do this dipoles with the colors is really amazing and then you go to the fifth light blue and the orange in the second orange light blue blue orange orange light blue and then green and yellow, green and yellow. And then you collect all these colors in your heart with green, emerald green, or mm, white light, which is the whole light. Yeah, very beautiful. Good reminder to, to do it with ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly, this is the thing. This is the thing. Practice with yourself and then you start believing. Not, be, not because you believe. No, because you feel it. You have felt it. And you know it is true. And this is knowledge that you know that is outside. This is an objective knowledge. Then you make this knowledge, knowledge subjective. It's part of you. And when it's part of you, something changes within you. And then, of course, you need the tools to be more capable to navigate. But the root, what is important is everything is conscious. Everything is interconnected. The entanglement states and everything is a totality, the total. I mean, this, 
this is what it is. <laughs> Very beautiful. Many, many. Well, people. Yolanda. Well, beautiful team, team wonder team. team. Thank you so much, Yolanda. That was absolutely amazing. So grateful and appreciate your time and your knowledge and everything that you give. Thank you. Thank you, Trish, for coming. Thank you, Kimberly, Rochelle, Petrina. <laughs> Thank you, Yolanda. Thank you, Maite. Thank you, beautiful girls. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you.